Good morning. Welcome to Swan Island on Wathaurong Country. Here, we're about two hours outside of Melbourne, and we are on Swan Island, a secretive training base where the SAS uh, trains for the torturous, murderous things we've seen in the news recently. We've come here today to, uh, to um, uh, draw attention to and abolish the S SAS and uh, to bring attention to the horrible things that happen. So we're on the base. We're just going to start walking up now to the headquarters. We'll have a few chats with people and just see what's going on. So my name is Greg Rolls. I'll be your host this morning. This is Jim. This is Shane. And over there we've got Peter Manane. So for those who don't know, the Brereton report came out um, a few weeks ago and exposed the murder, not not in the heat of battle, nothing that anything um, happened could be could be said by Brereton to be done in the heat of battle. There were cold-blooded executions. There was what was called bloodings, where uh, junior members of the Special Air Services were ordered to kill unarmed civilians and as part of their uh, initiation process into the gang of the SAS. And this culture is the worst of uh, worst of warfare. It's murder for the sake of murder and domination. And the leaders of the SAS and the leaders of the military continue to turn a blind eye um, on this practice. And uh, we're here to call it to account. The government needs to disband the SAS. So this is Swan Island, just outside of um, Melbourne, rough Queenscliff, about an hour and a half, two hours drive from Melbourne. And uh, this is the site where people train to do the horrendous crimes that we have seen uh, exposed in the media, thanks to the work of whistleblowers like David McBride. Now, David McBride, similar to Julian Assange, is a hero of um, uh, set, you know going against the culture, setting forth the truth for the innocent victims of war and torture. And uh, yet, um, the government, instead of rewarding him or looking after him, is persecuting him, and he looks like he will be spending time in jail unless we do something about it. So we need to get in the way of this uh, murderous regime that the Australian government has been letting happen in our name. We are all responsible. Our tax dollars pay for this. Um, you know, and we stand by. We've known since 2010 about the war crimes that have happened. And uh, yet no one has uh, done anything. And we all act shocked and surprised when this report came out. But when you listen to the local Afghans, and when you go to war in a place for over 20 years, the murders happen. And then when you create a culture uh, that glorifies violence and war and the domination of the other, these murders are bound to happen. And we all stood by and let it happen. Right, and we are here today as Christians against all terrorism, aren't we, James Dowling? You want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, Christians against all terrorism was um, yeah. joined in um, 2005 to resist the war crimes of Australia, the US and other countries in the Middle East. A group of us demanded a, uh, to be able to do a citizen's inspection of the Pine Gap because um, we believe Pine Gap was involved in terrorist bombing campaigns and that uh, they uh, provide targeting information for um, the bombing uh, campaigns in uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever else uh, the US and Australia are fighting the imperialist wars. And um, so Christians against all terrorism, against terrorism by suicide bombers as well as terrorism by the uh, companies that own the nuclear bombs and other um, bombs and weapons of mass destruction. And so um, we're resisting uh, state terror as well as um, smaller acts of terror. Uh, so that's why we're here today. It's, uh, base is a terrorist, another terrorist training base like Pine Gap is a terrorist, part of the terrorist network and that it provides targeting information for the bombing campaign base, trains people for their acts of terror in uh, Afghanistan, Iraq and elsewhere. These acts of terror have finally been exposed uh, recently in the mass media. This is the uh, Brereton report showing that at, uh, SAS have murdered at least 39 innocent people, unarmed people, in Afghanistan in recent years. And, uh, no doubt this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, I travelled to places in the meantime, one of them was West Papua, and I realised that the people there, the West Papuans living in their own country, lived almost in constant threat of what I suffered for. 
and uh, they're in West Papua. They're being tortured by people who are actually trained um, by people who train and teach here. Students of SAS soldiers and special forces from places like this. I'm Father Peter Monain, a Dominican priest, and uh, we got into uh, the outer area. We can't get past the main gate. Uh, we have a letter here for the commandant or whatever he is of the SAS in Australia. Uh, the SAS are trained to be killers and torturers. They're special troops, and as you know from the recent scandals in Afghanistan, they have killed innocent people in serious numbers. The culture has gone wrong. In 2014, eight protesters came across onto this island. They came across early in the morning. They came across for the same reason that we've come across, to disrupt the training for war to call for troops to come home from Afghanistan and other parts of the world that Australian troops are currently at war, fighting, killing. So they came across here peacefully, non-violently, just as we have. They came across here. Yes, they were trying to disrupt what happens here. They were trying to disrupt the training that happens here, very much so. And we know that when we come here, as Greg has said, they shut down. People are in their barracks. They're not out training. Um, and that's part of what we want to do. And so in 2014, eight people came across. They split up into pairs. They went out into different parts of this island. And they, one of, the, one of the protesters called 3AW and started talking on the radio and was very clear, again, that this is a, these were non-violent protests, that they were a physical threat to no one. There was no way that the people who came across to this island in any way endangered the physical welfare of anyone on this island. And it was very clear from the interview, from the fact that these protesters had been coming for, for four or five years before that, that, there was no doubt that these were peaceful protesters. And so when several, some of the soldiers on this day, they heard the interview and they decided that they were going to take care of the situation themselves. And they came out. They found two of the protesters. They crash tackled them to the ground as the protesters tried to say hello. We're nonviolent protesters. They crash tackled them to the ground. They put hoods over their heads. They stripped them naked and they cuffed their hands behind the backs. They stripped them naked using knives to cut off their clothes. After that, they beat them. They dragged them naked along the gravel. They screamed at them, asking them questions. What are you doing here? How many of you are here? Why are you here? They threatened them with drowning. They threatened to throw them in the ocean. And this is an island. That's a very plausible threat. At least one of them, a soldier took a stick, took it to the naked protester who was cuffed and hooded and threatened to take that stick and use it to anally rape them. This is what they did. Right here, we're only 90 minutes from Melbourne. This is in our own backyard. Now, we've heard about things that have happened over in Afghanistan, and sometimes it feels a little hard to, for it to feel real. This happened right here, right in our own backyard. This is what happened. This is what this training does. The training that is done on this base, that's the outcome, that's the result. And that's what happened in 2014. And so we're calling for the abolition of the SAS. We're calling for all troops to come home, sending troops to US wars of aggression. Well, the police are coming to arrest us, and we've shut the base down for about an hour or two, maybe two. Okay, so <laughs> you understand that you're trespassing? We do. We do? We're prepared to break that law because they break horrible laws to kill people. And that's the reason scandal was shown. Yeah. Queenscliff. We're here on the Call of Nations. This is the country the Bundra made. And there's the uh, Queenscliff Yacht Club, um, and it's amazing, spectacular countryside that's being polluted and uh, dirty by war. And that's the thing about war, is it is uh, the leading cause of the climate crisis. Um, so people who are trained on this island that we're currently being driven off of, uh, they are trained and they are sent to places around the world. Um, there's the gate, we're just going off the gate. They are sent to places around the world like West Papua, um, like Yemen, and... Um, the U and uh, the UAE and uh, Mozambique and Kenya I learnt today and skills they are taught there they teach to other people to assault 
and to torture. So we're just about to be let out of the Divi van, so I'll just put my mask back on. So um, uh, we need to continue uh, this loving resistance, this nonviolent resistance to uh, war making and war crimes that are happening around the place. Um, with climate crisis and with refugees, we're going to need to um, all step up and we're all going to need to continue loving fearlessly, loving courageously, loving our neighbours as ourself. Walk out with that privilege and our health and my mental health intact this time. This time I wasn't assaulted. Thank Breaking God. Bags just over here. I thank you very much. Thank you. So I was assaulted. Hi, Graham. I'm still live streaming. I like live, live stream throughout the whole arrest. Seriously? Yes. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's the other two. The other two are there. So we're being let out uh, with summons. This is non-violent resistance to war making and war crimes that our country takes place in. We all need to get involved to stand up lovingly, peacefully, non-violent for what is right. Because our country continues to commit war crimes. We need to abolish the SAS. We need independent investigation into the crimes. And we need to protect whistleblowers like David McBride, who has been uh, persecuted and facing jail time for releasing information on these war crimes. I'm Greg Rolls, um, Christians Against All Terrorism, uh, Swan Island Peace Convergence. Please join us um, defending your freedoms and those who can't defend themselves.